This video I'm going to title the Springfield 1874 Trapdoor FAQ or Frequently Asked Questions. And the reason I'm making this video is because I'm doing some work on a trapdoor group of rifles and I'm trying to get these videos out, put some information out, but as usual what happens is in the shooting sports or whatever there's a lot of confusion, a lot of mayhem, and even when I was doing the videos, they're not well organized. So I'm making this video to basically explain, and I'm going to go into little subsections because it's a very complex thing, and I'm doing a lot of stuff here. And it's impossible to put it in one short video of what, what I'm doing and the scope of it. And so let's start with, say you're interested in this particular weapon. Okay, and the reason it gets confusing is, is uh, it is a military weapon, it is an antique, so it has a historical thing. Uh, 4570 is a popular caliber still to this day. There are modern guns, people hunt with these. People could have been uh, inherited one of these, say, it's been in the family forever. Um, or you're just interested in, in a neat old gun and would like to buy one and shoot it, okay? So, you see there's a, there's a varying spectrum of all these people, and like anywhere, on YouTube or any uh, gun club or anything, people will look at this weapon, you know, in different ways, have different thoughts, and this is where all the confusion comes in, okay? Uh, like with shooting it or using it or collecting. So you have to make some decisions. And like a collector, a lot of gun collectors look for pristine examples, like in new condition. They don't intend to shoot it. They have a collection. And, and they're looking more for the monetary value. Okay? Because anything that is old and is in near perfect working order with no signs of use or something, there's very few examples that survive and that's what brings up their value. And another thing is gun values. Um, the best thing to do is go to my channel and then search my channel. There's a little search box and I have made videos on gun collecting, my thoughts on that, values of guns, which a lot of people send me emails asking me, well what's my gun worth? Well that's kind of hard nowadays to to say because the way things are with all this panic buying and the way people are and how they look at it, you know, things can have a value, say like an AR-15, a $700 retail value a year or two ago. Now, they went up to $1,700, $1,000 more during the panic. And I've seen in a recent gun show, they're back, a guy had a whole shipment of them. that used to be seven, 750 retail guns for $1,100. So, it's hard to say what the value is. It all kind of comes down to what you uh, want to put into it. Okay? But another thing is, I've done a whole bunch of book reviews. The best thing to do, my advice here is, study about these guns. The reason is, even if you were given the gun through your family, or you already have one, or you're thinking, especially if you're thinking of buying one, Go to, and just type in book review, and there's several books that I highly recommend you read, okay? You can't cover it in a video. You have to study these books. It explains these guns, the history of these guns, and what's been replaced and what's, you know, because again, when we talk about value, a gun that is in its original unaltered condition is worth much more than a gun that has been assembled from a bunch of parts. Now that happened both in the past, years ago when these guns were surplused out, maybe 80, 100 years ago, to recently. I see a lot of people slap these guns together from a bunch of parts, which they are available, barrel actions. And people may have an accumulation of parts, try to put some guns together. But it doesn't have the same value as a pristine condition gun and people do put them on the online auctions at really ridiculous prices. Or if the gun's been pitted and damaged, some of it is common sense, okay? 
you know, I've seen some of these advertised for a pretty hefty price of what a nice condition gun will go into, and they had pits everywhere, trigger guard, butt plate, barrel, the breech block are deeply pitted and rusted where somebody cleaned it up. These examples aren't worth it. So you have the, the deal with confusion on values, what's original. The best thing to do is read the books and know. Even if you're not going to buy the gun, if you have one, read the book and know for sure what you have. Okay, even if the gun's been in your family for a bunch of years, it could have been modified by one of your relatives. The one thing I do find on a lot of these guns, and it's another problem with it, people don't understand how they work. Okay, the sights, you always find... I find a lot of these pictures of them, the sights are different. They have sights from all kinds of different weird guns or more modern sights replaced on there. They, they pull off the front sights, there's a brazed block and a blade. And I've seen these removed and replaced with commercial sights, the rear sights removed. And that comes from a misunderstanding of how the gun operates. Okay, if you read the books, you'll see that the different types of sights, okay, like this here is the earlier buckhorn sight on this gun. Okay, we'll zoom in just to give you a quick example. This type of rear sight. This was used with the 406 grain ammunition in the early 1873s. Now you will find earlier models that were changed to the later sight which is called the Buffington sight, okay, which is this type here. The difference is, is they changed the ammunition for the 406 grain to the 500 grain bullet. And because of the different ballistics, the uh, sight had to be, they changed the sight. And the front sight blade is different. And unless you put the same ammunition that is used in the gun, which is a soft lead bullet loaded with black powder, this gun will not throw the bullet in the right place. You see people shooting, a lot of videos of shooting these guns, but they don't show you what they're shooting at. One guy was honest, couldn't hit a four foot wide board at 50 yards. The reason is not using the right ammo. And another thing which is very important is these older original guns. Now what throws confusion in is there are, twice there have been made replicas. Uh, back in the 70's Harrington and Richardson made a replica of this uh, trapdoor gun. And now currently Pedersoli imports a replica of both the rifle and carbine. I don't have any of them. I haven't shot them. I don't know if the groove and the barrels are different or exactly like the originals, so I can't say anything there. But assuming a modern made replica is a little, may be different, I can't tell you for sure. There are model sharps, um, running to rolling blocks, there's been a lot of repros. So this adds to confusion. I'm going to work basically with the original guns with barrels and twist rates to the original specification. So when you do that, okay, jacketed bullets are out. These guns are not designed to use jacketed bullets. I see people doing it. The problem is the groove diameter, do it in a nutshell real quick, the groove diameter is way too big. The bullets are usually 457 diameter. The groove diameter is about 460, 461. So what happens is, and the steel in these barrels is not modern steel. When you fire the undersized jacketed bullets, the powder blows back and actually erodes the internal rifling. It'll erode the barrel. The steel can't handle it. Okay, the, the force, the fire, it causes an erosion. I've seen people shooting jacketed bullets, and there's probably a bunch of them bunch of you out there have done it for years. You know, it's your property, do what the hell you want. But I highly don't recommend doing it. It does wear the barrels out quicker. Okay, 